Happy New Year's. And I got a couple questions before we jump on into the message, okay? How many of you made some New Year's resolutions? Any of you make New Year's resolutions? Come on, it's okay. I honestly, I think they're good. I think New Year's resolutions are good, both spiritual and physical. I made a physical New Year's resolution. I'm not doing real good already, but I'll tell you why in a little bit. But I made a New Year's resolution to drink more water in 2019. I know that sounds silly, doesn't it? Drink more water. Do you know that for you young people, more water, drinking more water is the best thing you can do for your complexion? It's better than... um, not better than Mary Kay, but it's better than all those other things, okay? It's better than drinking water. Is gr- Drinking water for your back, for your discs, for your bones. The best thing you could do, drink water. So I did make a New Year's resolution. One of my New Year's resolutions was to drink more water. And I talked to you a lot of you last week. You said, man, I'm making a New Year's resolution. I, I, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because I don't want you to feel conviction or have to lie in church. But how many of you started that Bible app? How many of you started your reading through the Bible? Hey, got a couple hands. Man, I want to encourage you. Keep doing that. Now, now, here's my second question. I know we're only a few days into this, but anybody already break some New Year's resolutions? <laughs> All those same hands went up, huh? Hey, listen, I want to encourage you in this, okay? Listen to me. Don't quit. Don't quit. If you've messed up, I mean, we're what, five days, six days into this? And you're like, I already broke my, man, we're six days into this and I'm already four days behind in my Bible reading, right? Listen to me, listen to me this morning. Don't quit. Don't give up. Listen, if you're a believer, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So I'm gonna encourage you, don't quit. Don't give up. Uh, I, I know we live in a new modern technology, you know, we have the phone apps and most of our, Bible reading programs are in, in our apps. But how many of you remember the one-year Bible? Any of you remember those? It was literally a whole Bible, and it wasn't broken down Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. It was broken down January 1, January 2. How many of you remember those? I remember when I first got saved, I got one of those, and I was going to read through the Bible. It was a one-year Bible, but somehow I got the one-and-a-half-year version, okay? It took me a year and a half. I was a new believer. It took me a year and a half to go through the one-year Bible. But listen, I did it. I did it. I didn't quit. I didn't give up. And that's what God's looking at. So please, if you, whether it's physical or spiritual and you're thinking already, man, I already broke my resolution. Don't quit. Don't give up. Amen? Don't give up. I played, I played, I'm excited about this. It might not excite many of you, but I played my first game of basketball the other night, okay? Yeah, not very serious game. And there will never be another serious game for the rest of my life, okay? For if you don't know, I dislocated this shoulder, torn some stuff, and, and I can't lift it past there. But it's really funny when I put a ball in my hand, like if this was the ball, all of a sudden I can go like this. Shoot. So I played my first game. But you know what? Man, at first, it, the, the, the rehab, the, the, some of this stuff was just was, was pain-taking. It was, it was very, very slow. But I didn't quit. I didn't give up. And I want to encourage you that. Man, if you're here this morning and you're a little downcast, don't be. Just get back up and you keep on going. Whether it's a physical resolution or a spiritual resolution, if you've already busted, you already broke it, get back up and keep on going. Do not quit. Amen. Here's the last question. Now, how many of you, when it came to New Year's, you're like, you've been doing this for a long time like me. So you're like, you know what? I'm going to aim low right? Come on, we do that, right? When you've been doing this for years and years and years, and you've broken every New Year's resolution, you get to the point where it's like, I'm going to aim low this year. It's like, in 2019, I'm going to lose three pounds, right? In 2019, I'm going to go to the gym three times. Not three times a week, you know, just three times in 2019. I have one of my kids who, who we were like going to go to the gym Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So last Friday, we rolled around, and I asked this child, I'm trying not to say here, see, I asked this child, hey, we're going to the gym? Oh, man, I don't feel like it tonight. I don't feel like it. And I'm like, it hasn't even been three days. You're already breaking the resolution. And, and this child was like, it, it wasn't really a resolution. It was more a thought. <laughs> it was more a thought, okay? <laughs> Listen, uh, I, wherever you're at this morning, I just want to encourage you. And I want to encourage you with the word. And, and listen, this isn't tied to last week's message. But if you weren't here last week, it would really be helpful 
go back and listen to last week's message because it does kind of run together. But I want to encourage you in this. The new year, the, the month of January, they are usually, it's usually a season a season of self-improvement. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It's usually a season of self-improvement, of making a better version of me, right? Making a better version of you. Churches tend to have a little higher attendance. Gyms, how many of you go to the gym? If, if you're a regular gym person, you go to the gym on a regular basis, you know that in January, you're the person that is kind of being driven nuts, okay? Because you're like, what are all these people doing here? Who are all these new people? And you find out they're not new people. They've had a membership for three years. It's just that in January, the gyms are full. By February, they're back to normal. They're back to normal, right? If, 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 if like, like Whole Foods, Sprouts, um, all of the health food stores, they see an increase in January. Most of you know I worked for a grocery chain for 30 years in their grocery warehouse. Uh, the last 10, 15 of those years, I was in the produce department. Come January, the produce that we shipped out, we saw an increase in organic produce going out. Our, our fruits and vegetables, all of that stuff in January, the, it, there was an increase. There was an increase. Now, by Super Bowl Sunday, it went from produce to chips and soda and pizza rolls and all of that. And then after Super Bowl Sunday, it went back to normal. It was like, not back to the organic, it was just back to normal. <clears throat> so I want to tell you, this, this is all normal, this is all normal. And listen to me, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. If you've made some resolutions and some of those things, it's actually a good thing. It's a good thing to stop, to take, to take inventory, to, to reevaluate what you're eating, what you're doing, to reevaluate what you're saying, where you're going what you're spending money on, to reevaluate some of the relationships you're in. It's a good thing. It really is. It's a good thing. <clears throat> but listen to me. The question that we're focused on is, here's what we get focused on is, what should I do about me? Isn't that, isn't that really what we're focused on? What should I do about me? And again, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. In 2019, listen, a stronger, <laughs> slimmer, smarter, out of debt, in better relationship, you is a good thing, right? I think we'd all agree it's a good thing. But for the next few weeks, I want to try to focus our attention on a bigger question, on a harder question, on a much more tougher, more threatening question, okay? And now some of you are like, oh man, I should have stayed home today, right? I want you to focus in, <coughs> sorry, I'll explain the cough later too. I want you to focus in on a tougher question for 2019. And I'm going to show you this question, but I'm also going to spend the next couple weeks going into that question because I don't think I'll answer all your questions that you may have this morning. So it's actually going to take a couple weeks, but I want you to really dig into this this morning. And I want you to really think about this. And I want you to hang with me over the next couple of weeks. Amen. Listen, I want to introduce this question to you by reading a whole chapter out of the Bible, actually out of the whole test, Old Testament. And the chapter I want to read from is in the book of Nehemiah. How many of you know where Nehemiah is at? You can turn there if you'd like. Um, and, and, and I want to get you caught up before I just start reading it, okay? Nehemiah is a Jewish man who did something amazing. He did an amazing thing, and it was so amazing that it became part of the Old Testament. It became part of the scriptures. It's a fascinating story. It's a fascinating book, <coughs> the book of Nehemiah. It's fascinating, and I'm going to read one chapter, but what's kind of fascinating about it is there's no real, there's no real miracles in the book of Nehemiah. It's a story about hard work, discipline, vision, obedience, and faith. And I want to show you that this morning. I want to, let me give you a quick history lesson, catch you up to where this, where the book of Nehemiah starts off in, in chapter one is where we're going to start. But <coughs> here's where we're at. Nehemiah takes place after the Jewish exile, about 605 BC, if any of that means anything to you. But it was after the Jewish exile. And what that was, was the, the Babylonians invaded Judah 
invaded Israel. There was a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom, and I can't really get into all of that. But they basically, the Babylonians invaded Israel. And when they invaded Israel, they killed a lot of the Israelites. They took a lot of them captive. They took the brightest, the smartest, the strongest, and they took them captive. They took them captive as slaves. They put them to work in their governments and different things. They left behind a very, very small remnant. And they pretty much destroyed the city. They, the, 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 the nation of Israel was pretty much shut down. Now, after the Babylonians, about 70 years after the Babylonians invaded, about 70 years later, the Persians conquered the Babylonians. So you following me? The Persians come along and, and conquer the Babylonians. Now, this man by the name of Cyrus the Great was reigning. And Cyrus the Great decided... Why do we have all these Jews scattered all over the place? Why do we have all these Jews scattered all over the place? So he made this proclamation. He said, if the Babylonians took you out of your homeland, you can go home. If you've been displaced, if you've been taken out of your homeland, everybody just go home. You can all go home. So what happened was thousands, thousands, and thousands, literally thousands, of them, I don't know if it was millions, but a lot of the Jewish people, a lot of the Israelites headed back home. They went back home. But when they got there, it didn't go well. It didn't go very well because there was trouble. They had a lot of trouble getting things started. There was no economy. There was no infrastructure. You'll see that the walls were, in dis the, the walls were torn down. The gates were burned. The city was in disarray. They just had nothing going. It was really a lot going on. <coughs> so follow me on this. 90 years later, it's Nehemiah. We don't even know if Nehemiah's ever been in Jerusalem. Now, keep that in mind as I start this story off. We don't even know if he's ever been in Jerusalem. We meet, we meet Nehemiah, and he works for King Xerxes. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's close enough. And this is the king of Persia. And he's working for the king, and he begins to journal his story. And it's actually history. But he begins to journal his story, and that's the book of Nehemiah. So we're going to read chapter 1, and then I'll ask the question that we're going to be looking at for the next few weeks. So if you've got your Bibles, your phones, whatever you may have, um, open them up to the book of Nehemiah. I'm actually reading from my Bible. I, I'm actually turned into one of those techie people. Can you believe that? I mean, I usually, I always have my scriptures up here on this big piece of paper. And if you ever wondered why, it's because I can print it bigger on this, Okay. Um, my Bible must have gotten wet because the print seems to have shrunk. So if you're wondering, how come he doesn't always read from his Bible when he's at church? It's because I'd have to pull out glasses half the time, okay? But I want to read this first chapter of Nehemiah, so here we go. <coughs> Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 1. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hachala. I'm not going to pronounce any of these right. Okay, and it came to pass in the month of, of, of Chislev, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the, the citadel. Now listen, I'm going to stop periodically through this, but that may just sound like a whole bunch of words right there that I just read. It may sound like it's not even that important or anything else. But listen, that, that little verse right there is very important. What that verse is showing you is some history there. There's some history there. It gives theologians and, and archaeologists it gives them a date. It gives them a time. It gives them a place. And they have literally gone back in history because of times and places and dates like this and confirmed what the word of God is saying. So it's not just, this story doesn't just start off with once upon a time in a land far, far away. It's giving you some history. It's giving you something to latch a hold of. Okay, so, so, so verse 2 says this. Then Hanani, one of my brethren, came with men from Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of, Ju the wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. Pause there for a moment. Here's basically what he's saying. It's not going well. It's not going well. We're having a tough time. Things are not going well there. He gets this report back from people today. Man, it's bad. It's bad there. It's not going well. Watch his response, verse 4. And so it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. 
I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. I got to pause there again. Listen, he wept and mourned and fasted for days, for days. He got that news and it wasn't like, oh man, that's bad. Wow. That's, that, that's bad. That's awful. I'm sure glad I'm in Shushan. I'm sure glad I'm in the palace. I'm sure glad I know where my next bill is coming from. Man, that is really bad for them. You know, I'll pray for them, but <laughs> see you wouldn't want to be you, right? That, that wasn't his response. And I hope you see that, that his response was, man, he wept for days, for days. It literally, his heart was broken. His heart was broken. And that's what I want you to catch. Verse 5. Verse 5, it says this. And I said, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who, who, love, who love you and observe your commandments. He's just kind of, I, I like that. He's just reminding God. Whenever you pray, do you ever just, and it's okay. He's like reminding God. God, this is who you are. Remember, remember this, right? And he goes on, verse 6. Please, please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open, that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night. For the children, now watch this, for the children of Israel, your servants, your servants, and confess, I'm praying for them, your, the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which, watch this, what's he say? Which who? Which we have sinned against you, both my father's house and I, have sinned. Now remember that. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances which you, which you commanded your servant Moses. Listen, here's what he's saying. Here's what he's saying. He's not, <clears throat> he's saying, we've done this. My father's house has done this. I've done this. He's not pointing fingers. He's not making excuses. He's not playing the blame game. He's not blaming other people. And, and, and he goes beyond that. What, what he really says here is he says this. He says, we deserve this. He said, we deserve this. We did not keep your commandments. We did not do as you have told us to do. And he didn't say, they didn't do it, God. He's like, we did this. We deserve this, God. We didn't do as, as you commanded. And I, and I love verses 8 and 9. I'm going to read on. But he basically quotes God to God. And it's kind of funny, but that's really what he's doing. Verse 8, remember, I pray the word that you commanded your servant Moses saying, <coughs> sorry about that, saying, if you are what? If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast out to the farthest parts of the heavens, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to this place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. He's quoting God back to God. And then, now watch this. He says in verse 10, now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed. Again, kind of reminding God, these are the people that you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. Remember God, remember these people that you've taken out of Egypt by your strong hand, by all your power, the plagues and everything that went on. Remember God, these are your people. And now in verse 11, this is the last verse, he asks God for something specific. And this is what I want you to catch. Verse 11, last verse, let me read it to you. Oh Lord, I pray. Please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your name. And let your servant prosper this day. Let him prosper because he's going to ask something. Let your servant prosper this day, I pray, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, in the sight of the king whom he's going to approach in just a moment. Let me have favor in the sight of the king for I was the king's cupbearer. Here's what you got to understand. Here's what's going on. That's it for chapter one. And I'm not going to read any more of it, but here's what I need you to understand. Nehemiah's got it made. He's in the palace. He's serving the king. He's eating good. He's drinking. He's got it made. He's safe. Everything is going good for this guy. He has got it made, but he's about to go ask the king for an indefinite leave of absence. Here's a man who's got it made. The king has been taking care of this guy. And now he's going to go and approach the king and ask him for an indefinite leave of absence. Listen, he's living in a day and age. He's living in a time where you don't ask the king for anything. The king does all the asking, 
okay? The king does all the asking. You don't ask the king for anything, anything. This is risky. His life is at risk here. This is life-threatening. And listen, even if the king says yes, it's going to be a huge sacrifice for Nehemiah. It's going to be a huge sacrifice for Nehemiah. But, but watch this. But Nehemiah's heart was broken. And he felt compelled, he felt compelled to act on what he heard. So you ready? Here's the question for you this morning. Here's the question for you this year. And, and listen, I don't expect you to have an answer today. In fact, I'd rather you not answer the question too quickly, okay? I don't expect you to have an answer this morning. And I'd rather you not answer this question too quickly. But here's the question. You ready? What breaks your heart? What breaks your heart? I want you to think about that for a moment. What breaks your heart? When, when, when you look around you, when you look around you, when you look in your family, when you look in your relationships, when you look in your workplace, in your community, in your nation, in your city, whatever it might be, in your school system, when you look at what's going on politically, when you, when, when you see what's happening, when you see what's happening with family, when you see what's happening with children, when you see what's happening with the state of our nation, what what is it that captures your emotions? Not, listen to me, not what makes you mad, okay? Because I know we can all turn on the news and get mad. I'm not talking about what is it that makes you mad, okay? What captures your emotions? What breaks your heart? And I'm going to explain this, but, but I want you to get this this morning. This is, a, this is a huge question, and it's actually a very difficult question. It's actually a difficult question because some of you might be thinking, oh, what breaks my heart, Troy, is so huge. It, it's so huge that, that, that it, can't, it can't really even count. It doesn't even count because I can't do anything about it. Troy, what, what, what breaks my heart, has it's always been that way. And, it, and it'll always be that way. There's nothing I can do. It's always been like that. It, what breaks my heart, Troy, is, is, is this, this, and this, but it doesn't really count because I don't know anybody in that field. I don't know anybody in that area. I don't know how to affect change in any of that area. I don't have the resources. I'm too young. I'm too old. There, there, there's so many things that you could begin to say, well, that breaks my heart, but this, but this, and that, but this, and that. Listen, what breaks your heart is going to be a very dangerous question. It's going to be a very dangerous question for all of us. But here's what I want us to do. Instead of going into 2019 asking the question most, most people will ask, what about me, <laughs> right? What can I do about me? That's the question we're all asking and most people will ask. What can I do about me? What if we ask this question? What can I do around me? What can I do around me. Last week we talked about it, and again, please go back, catch last week's message, because it does play into a lot of this, but we talked about we need to live different to make a difference, right? Last week we talked about that. you got to live different if you want to make a difference, and we talked about the two ways to do it is to get close to Jesus and get close to people. I think Lori used that, the phrase that we had last week in, in prayer. Uh, people, people need you to get close to Jesus, and Jesus needs you to get close to people. And we talked about that last week, and, 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 and that's, how, that's how we make a difference. That's how we make a difference. And here's, here's what I know about you. Here's what I know about me in, in, in this sense. The people that you admire, the people that I admire, listen, the people you and I admire, they're not, they're not the people that can maintain their ideal weight year after year, okay? That's not really the people that you admire. That's great, and that's incredible. That's awesome, but come on. That's not the people that you, can admi you admire. The people you admire, it's not the people, it's not the guy that got out of $10,000 worth of credit card debt, okay? Again, that's good, but you don't look at this story like, wow, you should read this story. This guy got out of $10,000 worth of credit card debt. It's amazing. It just so inspires me. We, we don't really do that. Now, now listen, a quick pause. Listen, that's good. And that's important. That's good. That's important. Some of us may need to get out of debt in 2019. Some of us may need to lose a few pounds in 2019, okay? Trying to be nice there, okay? Not all of you. Probably nobody here, okay? 
Some of us, yeah, we need to get out of debt. Some of us, maybe we do need to eat different. We need to, maybe we do need to lose a little weight. But listen, those aren't the people, those aren't the things that, that really, that's not what inspires us. What inspires us is people who make a difference, isn't it? What inspires us is people that make a difference. People, people who change the world, right? And, and, and I, I, just lost, I, I just lost half of you. I lost probably more than half of you. People that change the world and have mo- most of you, if not all of you, are like, that's not me. <laughs> There's Troy. I'm not going to, ch- I can't change the world. I'm not going to change the world. And, and you're, right now you're probably expecting me to be like, yes, you can. With God, all things are possible. You could change the world. You could be a, a, a demon breaker, world changer, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to do that, okay? I'm not going to do that this morning because, listen, most of you will not change the world. Welcome to Ignite Church, right? Listen, most of you, most of you, let's be honest. Very few people do, right? Come on, let's be honest. And now, now I'm not saying, I said most. I didn't say you won't. Man, the cure for, the cure for cancer could be one of you in this room. I mean, some, one of you in this room could be the person that sparks a revival that sweeps through this nation. I'm not ruling any of that out. With God, nothing is impossible. With God, nothing is impossible. So please don't misunderstand me. I'm just saying as a general rule, okay, probably none of you in this room are going to change the world. Okay? Now follow me, though, but because here's what's even bigger and more important than that. Everyone in this room, everyone here this morning can change somebody's world. Everybody here this morning can change somebody's world. That should be our goal. Listen, that should be your New Year's resolution. You want to make a New Year's resolution? My New Year's resolution should be, I want to change somebody's world in 2019. That should be our goal. That should be our New Year's resolution. Listen, if that's not our goal, if that's not our goal, if that's not your goal, if that's not the church's goal, can I, can I just predict to you what 2019 will look like? If that's not your goal, let me predict to you what 2019 will look like for you. We'll sit around, we'll watch TV, and we'll blame everybody. We'll blame everybody. Blame, blame, blame. Blame, blame, blame. Blame, blame, blame. We'll blame. We'll, 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 we'll blame. Yeah, come on. I don't get political, but let me, let me just put it this way. Isn't that what's going on in our government right now? It's just one party blaming another party, blaming another party. And, and here's what's happened in our nation. It starts from the head down, and it's, it, it, it's going through our nation. That is the problem with America today. It's just blame, blame, blame. Uh, I want to show you this plaque. I, I, I'm one of those guys that likes those cheesy little plaques with sayings on them, okay? But I saw this one, and I don't know if she'll get it up on the board. Yeah, I love this one. It says this. People who blame things don't change things. I like that, okay? I like that. I like those cheesy little things. I'm sorry, but I do. People who blame things Don't change things. Listen, when something breaks your heart, if you just sit there, if you just sit there and say, well, it's the president's fault. Well, it's Congress's fault. Well, it's the PTA's fault. Well, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's the school system's fault. It's, it's the Democrats' fault. It's the Republicans' fault. It's my boss's fault. It's my parents' fault. Or, or it's the church's fault. It's the church's fault. Or, or it's, it's this person who wronged me when I was a child. It's all their fault. It's all, listen, all of those things may be true, please. All of those things may be true, but as long as you're blaming, you're not changing. As long as you're blaming, then nothing is changing. Blame is not a strategy for changing anything. Blame is how we avoid changing. Let me say that again. Blame is not a strategy for changing anything. Blame is how we avoid changing things. Think about this for a moment. What if we took all the time and energy that we spend blaming and actually focused it on bringing about change? And listen, I know that sounds like, that sounds like a really good political statement, doesn't it? I'm not even, I'm not, listen, listen, I'm talking about our own lives. I'm not talking political. I'm talking about your life this morning, your own personal life this morning. 
if you're if you're here this morning, listen. If you're not a Christian, then you're then you're off the hook, okay? But listen, if you're here this morning, and you're a Christian, if you're here this morning and you're a Christian, let me change that. Let me change that. If you're here this morning and you're committing to living your life by what Jesus taught, okay? Because honestly, that's really what a Christian is, but we won't go there right now, okay? But listen, if you're here this morning and you're committed to living your life by what Jesus taught, you can't actively follow Jesus without making someone's life better. You can't. You can't. Close to God, close to people. Listen, we can't win God's favor without loving the people he loves. You're not going to win his favor without loving the people he loves. People matter to God. So people should matter to us. Everywhere Jesus went, people were better off. Think about that. Everywhere, I'm not saying they were happy, some got mad and all of that, but everywhere Jesus went, people were better off. Listen, he didn't just feel compassion. He acted compassionately. Do you understand that? Jesus didn't just feel compassion. He acted compassionately. So, so what moves you? What, what breaks your heart? What breaks your heart? It sounds like what's in your wallet, right? What, what breaks your heart this morning? Now, now let me, let me begin to wrap it up, first close. The interesting thing about Nehemiah is Nehemiah is acting, he's acting on what broke his heart. But there's more to this story than what you really see. The interesting thing about this story is the timing of it. It's God's timing in everything that's going on. What Nehemiah didn't know was he was just part of a sequence of events. Nehemiah was just part of a sequence of events that started way before him and would continue long after him. Listen, 70 years before Nehemiah, God stirred the heart of a man by the name of Jerubbabel. He stirred Jerubbabel's heart, and he told him, go back to Israel. Go back and start rebuilding the temple. 14 years before Jeremiah, Nehemiah, sorry, 14 years before Nehemiah, God stirred the heart of a man by the name of Ezra. And he told him, go back and teach the people the law. And then came, then came Nehemiah, go back, rebuild, organize the people. And all of that in preparation for what would happen 440 years later, when Jesus would walk into that very city, that very temple, and proclaim to be the Messiah. It looks as if Nehemiah was just acting upon what was around us. It was all, it was all part of God's plan. Listen, Nehemiah's decision to embrace what, what, what broke his heart, what broke his heart was, was actually what God was doing all along. Listen to me. Listen to me because you, just, you, you need to get a hold of this. You have no idea what hangs in the balance. You have, you have no idea of who hangs in the balance to you making a decision to do something about what breaks your heart. You have no idea. Nehemiah probably had no idea. Let me tell you this. God sent his son into the world to do for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. You know why? Because our sin broke his heart. God was moved because our sin broke his heart. And he did something about it. What, what breaks your heart this morning? What breaks your heart this morning? Can I just, uh, I, I feel like, I don't know if I need the rest of this or not, but man, I, I just feel like I just want to sit down and talk to you for a moment. Can I just sit down and talk to you? Can I, I, I feel like I want to share this with you in such a way that, that I want you to get this. It's, it's, it's like, I, I just want to be honest with you. That, that's, I was never going to say that this morning. I was never going to say that. That was a resolution. How many of you have ever said, can I be honest with you? Uh, that was one, that was a phrase that I was trying to eliminate out of my vocabulary because what it's saying is like, hey, can I be honest with you now? Everything I just said before all of this was a lie, but let me be honest with you. Okay. So I'm, I, I know I just said that, but disregard that. Okay. Let me sit down. Disregard that. I, everything I said before this was the truth. Okay. Uh, but let me, let me just, I want to share with you what's going on and, and, and what I'm feeling and thinking, okay? Because honestly, this is this, 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 this me being honest. I didn't like the message. 
I didn't like the message. I thought I would like the message a little bit more this morning, okay? But because I, I sat down Friday and, I, and I'm putting all my notes together, everything together, and I'm just like, I don't know if you've ever been there doing anything like this, a presentation or anything. And I'm sitting there Friday and I'm like, ah, God, I don't really like this. <laughs> I don't, God, I'm not really liking this right now. Because I know, God, that when I get home, I'm going to get asked this question. Where were you, where are you going with this? Yeah, I'm going to get asked that question. Where are you going with this? And it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So, so, so I was kind of like, I just, God, I'm just going to start over. Let me just, it's Friday afternoon. I'm like, God, I just need to start over. God, you, you know where I'm at. And, 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 and here's what I was thinking. This is just all I was thinking. God, you know, I've been sick all week. New Year's Eve, I got sick. And we, I was laughing with my wife earlier this week. It's like we had this saying, um, finish how? Finish well and start strong. You know how I, what I did on December 31st and what I did on January 1st? I finished sick and I started sick, okay? And I'm just being honest, okay? I'm just being honest. Man, I was sick for five days. I was sick for five days. Man, I'd have to put a washcloth over my eyes and my head. And listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to, listen, I never get sick. I, ne I never get sick. And this isn't me being, you know, positive confession. I believe in the power of our words. I believe in all of that, but I don't walk around the house. I don't have a cold. I don't have a cold. Okay. That's just not who I am. Okay. I was sick and I felt lousy. And now I'm sitting there Friday and I'm like, well, God, maybe I was just sick and I missed it. <laughs> Maybe I was just sick, and I didn't hear you very well, and I, and I just missed it. And God was, like, not letting me off the hook. He was like, no, no, that, this is what I want you to teach, and I want you to teach what I have next week because this, this, this continues on. And he's like, no, I want you to teach what I have, what I'm giving you. And I'm like, no, nah, I, I, I had to have missed it. I must have I missed it. I just struggled with all of this, and I'm like, God, I must have missed it. And, and, and what God spoke to me, and I'm going to ask you the same question he asked me, this was Friday, and I was actually feeling better. He's like, Troy, and I'm going to ask you the same question. When you're sick, who is it all about? Okay, when you're sick, think about it. When you're sick, who is it all about? It's all about me. Okay, when, you, when you're sick, it is all about you. And I'm, usually, I'm not that kind of person. When I'm sick, I'm usually like, just leave me alone. Okay, just leave me alone. But for most of us, when we're sick, it's like, Oh, turn that down, right? Oh, turn that down. Oh, please don't cook cabbage. It just stinks up the whole house, right? Or, 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 or don't bring french fries in the house. I feel sick and that just makes me hungry. Or, or we're like, can you get me, can you get me some water? Can you get me some seven up? Can you get me some chicken noodle soup, right? Can you pray for me? Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me, right? Come on, let's be honest. It's all about you. It is all about you. And God said, Troy, when you're sick all week, who is it all about? I'm like, it's all about me. <laughs> it's all about me. And listen, New Year's resolutions for the most part, who are they about? It's all about you. January, the month of January. And God was speaking this to me. It's like, who's it about? And I'm like, it's all about me. But then God spoke to me and he said, now, Troy, let's, let's really be honest. Let's be real. Who are the 11 months of the, the rest of the year? Who are those 11 months about? Come on, answer that yourselves. The, the, after January, who are the next 11 months all about? It's all, <laughs> it's all about you. <laughs> it's, isn't it? Come on, let's be honest. You're like, Troy, you are not going to grow a church in 2019 at this rate. No, no, but maybe we'll grow some people, amen? Maybe we'll grow some people when we begin to get honest, amen? And God was just showing me, Troy, it, you live in a society, you live in a time when it is just all about you. When it's all about you. I, I don't want to get too lost. I, I do want to stay with some of the, what I'm closing with. But, but, so I'm going through all of this. And, and, and I want to tell you this morning, I'm not sure where this will go. I got a pretty good idea next week. And I want to share about, you know what? Whatever is breaking your heart, I want to get you to do something about it. About it. But I want to tell you right now, it will cost you. It will cost you. And I'm not telling you you're going to have to quit your job. You're going to have to leave the country. You're going to have to become an activist. You're going to have to go tie yourself to a tree. You're going to have to do anything like that at all, okay? That's, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. But I am going to tell you, it's going to cost you. 
It's going to cost you. And I want to share a little bit about that next week, but, but I don't know where this will lead for you. I don't know what it will cost you. And I'm telling you already this morning, and I can't share it, but I'm telling you this morning, since I walked into this place with a different mindset in the sense that Holy Spirit, help me. Reveal to me what is really breaking my heart. God has already been working on me. He has already started working on me. And I'm going to guarantee you he'll do the, he'll, he'll do the same for you. Because listen, we're all on the same journey. We are all on the same journey with the same destination. Now listen, some of you, some of you may have to go through Samaria to get to the same destination. Some of you will get to go straight through. Some of you, you got to go through a mountain to get to the same destination. But we have the same destination. We're on the same des- journey. But there'll be, there, there'll be different things in your life. It's going to be different for you than it is for me. And, and I've refrained from, from giving you any examples of what will break your heart. Because I, I don't want to give you an example and you're like, ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> I'll take that one. I'll take, that's a good one. I like that one. I don't want you to be thinking, oh, I'll take one from column A, two from column B. And so I've refrained from, from giving you any examples, but let, let me just give you one. And please don't make this yours unless it really is yours. But, but some of you out there, man, some of you, you see a homeless person and it breaks your heart. Some of you are wired that way. You see a homeless person and it breaks your heart. I see a homeless person and I think 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. So, you know, I see a homeless person. I think 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. If a man doesn't work, a man shouldn't eat. And some of you are like, gosh, you're mean. You're, no, I'm not heartless, okay? There are some times I see a homeless person and God moves me with compassion and I will react on that compassion. But some of you see a homeless person, any homeless person, and it breaks your heart. That's not me. That's not me. And it's okay. Because there will be something in you, something about the way that you're wired, something that will break your heart that maybe won't break somebody else's heart. But I'm telling you that in 2019, God wants us to move upon that. To move upon whatever, whatever it is. And I believe that if if you spend this next week, from now until next Sunday, if you spend this next week just asking, God, help me to see what really breaks my heart, not what makes me mad, I just turn on the news to get that. God, show me, Holy Spirit, show me what really breaks my heart and what I can do about that. I believe if you begin to ask God that, I, begin to, I believe that he, the Holy Spirit's going to begin to reveal that to you. And listen, 2019 won't end up being a year all about you. It'll be a year about those around you, those things that are going on around you. Listen, listen to me. yes. Make a decision to lose weight. That is great. Yes, make a decision to get out of debt. But I want to tell you something. This morning, listen to me this morning. There's more to you. Take this as as nice as I can. There is more to you than your chubby little body and a bank book balance, okay? There is more to you than a chubby little body and a bank book balance. And when you begin to embrace what literally breaks your heart and begin to act upon it, I'm telling you things are going to change. I'm things are telling you things are going to change. And not only that, I'm telling you that 2019, and I hate saying this because I hate the pastors and people that say it. I don't hate them, okay? But, but 2019 will be your best year yet, okay? You, you've heard that so many times you get sick of hearing it, right? But I'm telling you right now, if 2019 becomes a year that you're focused on those around you and what's going on around you rather than just you, it will be your best year. It will be your best year. So I want to close, and I want to pray. And really, I hope you're getting this this morning. I hope you come back next week and just start to begin to absorb this because I don't think I'm going to answer everything this morning. Yeah, it seems kind of vague. It seems kind of huge. What breaks my heart? Oh, Troy, that's too vague. That's too big. That's too huge. I get that. But I also believe that if you begin to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal those things to you, he will, and it'll be life-changing. Let me pray for you. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the message. You can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or online at ignitechurchoc.com.